I'm gonna I'm gonna try this again. See if I can get it out a little more clearly. Discussing Cold Fusion, which I'm going to post a link to, uh, um, an interview for 60 Minutes on CBS that they did about some new breakthroughs in the Cold Fusion technology. They're not calling it Cold Fusion really anymore. Some people are, but it's it's this expansive idea of room temperature fusion in a safe environment. And the safe environment they found is the element palladium. Now, palladium, you may have heard of a paladin, a warrior of light, a shield of good, faith, kindness and good to help all. Palladium, dude. The thing that I found in, in all my studies so far that's the most unique about palladium is that it's, it's number 46 on the chart. That's not it, though. That's not what's the uh, interesting thing. The interesting thing is, whereas 45, 44, 43, and 42, and uh, 41 and 40 have five layers of electrons. Uh, I, don't, I don't need to read about this stuff. I know it. I like when I say that. It, it has, like... The, the lighter, as elements expand, usually uh, more electrons form in shells, in valence shells, which is like a layer, and then you'll have like two in the first layer, and then you'll have four in the second layer, four in the third layer, whatever, depending on the element. And there's 18 columns in the periodic table. So that gives a potential of up to 18 electrons in any given shell at any time. However, there is no element that has 18 electrons in its outermost shell, except for palladium. And palladium has one less layer. So, so all elements on the way up the chart, from, from hydrogen all the way up to the heaviest element, gain more electrons as they get bigger. And for the most part, they also gain shells as they get bigger, gain layers. So once you get up to 45 and then you go to 46, it loses a layer. It's the only element that has less layers of electrons than the one before it. It's like it shrinks. It's like it, it's like it pulls in, compacts into this almost impenetrable shield of electricity in its outermost layer, palladium. It's the only element with 18 electrons in its outermost valence shell. It's like a, a shield. The palladium, also, when you heat it up to about 775 degrees Celsius, uh, can bind with oxygen to form uh, palladium oxide. So with the in induction of deuterium oxide, which is heavy water, which is hy hydrogen oxide, which is water, H2O, um, but all the hydrogen atoms instead have an extra neutral, well they have a neutron added, like hydrogen is only one proton, one electron, but deuterium is one proton, one neutron, and one electron. So this water exists in nature, it's just there sporadically, you find this heavy water, they call it, with a neutron, extra neutron flow. So when you take these, these, this deuterium, this heavy water, this deuterium oxide, and filter it through this palladium with an electric current, essentially to superheat it, um, I think what happens is, firstly, uh, the oxygen disperses and, and creates palladium oxide in areas. Secondly, then, the, because that happens, deuterium oxide is a, is a, is a uh, what's called not a not a con conductor. It's the opposite of a conductor. It's an insulator. Uh, so it, it it insulates itself, and you have these deuterium atoms floating around at the superheated pace and then insulated and going crazy. And, and it's the reason that deuterium is so great for, for bouncing into itself is because of the neutron. Like two protons are going to have a hard time because they're just so positively charged and they don't weigh that much. I mean, they weigh as much as they, they are charged. The neutron has no charge. It's just like heavy weight throwing it at itself. And when a neutron uh, star collides. Two neutron stars, dude. Check that out online. I'll look for a picture maybe and link it. It's quite a, it's quite a, a dispersal of energy. So when you do that in, in a safe environment, the potential for collected energy is immense. 
And that's where we are right now. Palladium, dude. Paladin. Like the... the <laughs> anyway, check out this uh, interview. And I'm sorry if my if my if this video seemed like cocky or arrogant or any of that. I'm just trying to like confidently say as much as I know. I should say I'm not 100% about any of this stuff. It's just stuff I've read, pieced together, and some of it's theory. Like, I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty sure. I, I, I read that palladium oxide is a good insulator. Um, cool. That, that's all for now. I almost forgot. I want to say thank you, Malcolm, for sending me that link to the CBS report. Um, keep them coming, man. Good stuff, dude. And, and to anyone else, you know, if you have ideas, if you come across interesting stuff, send it my way, man.